I think the biggest thing that I'm dealing with right now is understanding how to bring my friends for support into this mm. because so many of the mutual friends or even non-mutual friends um oh you're crazy or maybe you're thinking this up or uh, unless they've experienced emotional and psychological abuse mm -hmm. i don't know how to go about explaining it or or getting the support that i need in a friendship manner to help get me through to the next step it's okay. just the believing part, you know? And is this, did you leave a toxic relationship, like a romantic relationship? Was this a yes. It was a romantic relationship. Was it 10, a 10 years with, with my boyfriend? 10 years. Okay. So people knew him very well, probably your friends. He was very well integrated in the social circle and they're wondering why you can't just break up normal. Yes. <laughs> yes, okay. totally. <laughs> okay. What types of things go on? Like, what are you most frustrated with in it? Um, I, I think it's when I bring up the matter and people will, oh, well, maybe have you tried this or have you tried that? And I'm like, no, this was emotional and psychological. I was being gaslighted. I was given the silent treatment. Oh, that's just what men do. No, that's not normal. That's not right. You know, oh, but he was, and this is the thing, you know, he's got such a thriving career mm -hmm. and such a great charismatic personality that people just don't accept or believe it either. Right. Like, oh, I'm sorry. And they'll kind of look at you like you're crazy. Right. And that's the whole part of this whole process is trying not to, trying to convince people that, no, I'm not crazy. I went through psychological abuse. Right. Okay. And so the people that you're telling, is it, um, it sounds like you're trying to squeeze orange juice from an apple, right? Like, <laughs> and so the people that you're telling clearly don't have an understanding of what right. it's like, or they're going through it themselves and they're in denial, or they're, you know, like there could be a million reasons why people don't understand it, you know? Right. And I guess I'm looking for support because I know that support is so important in friendships and in family. And my, my family has been pretty supportive and they were very close to him as well. Mm -hmm. But I think just trying to find those support people. Mm -hmm. And then I find myself like isolating myself more because the people are rejecting what I'm saying. Right. And so you're just trying to have like a, you're not talking about it in order to smear him or to no, no. Get rise out of people. You're just wanting to process and having yes. someone to, to talk it through with. And have yes. your friends be like, oh man, what's that like? Instead of, well, have you tried this? Because that doesn't, yeah. And, and well-meaning, I don't mean that sassy as it looked, but well-meaning. No, I, I totally get it. I, I think a lot of them are well-meaning, you know, like, oh, but there's all these good things. But in this type of situation, the good just can't outweigh the bad. <laughs> well, this is a really tricky place because it is, like, even, I have to say that even therapists, when they don't, have a firsthand experience often don't get it even though they know the diagnosis even though they know you know even so even people trained in mental health often don't get it until they experience it themselves so it's really tricky to explain emotional abuse because it's invisible it's like explaining fibromyalgia or something where, <laughs> yeah. you know where it's like well but i heard everywhere but why you know like right. it doesn't people just don't get these silent abuses and the silent pain so I mean, obviously, and you have found us, so obviously support groups where people do get it is the mm -hmm. number one source of validation for this. Talking it through places like this so that you can, like, doing long coaching sessions can give you an opportunity to just spill it all out, even though you don't need to repeat it again for your own mind. It's hearing it reflected back at you mm -hmm. by someone that gets it that I think is what we're looking for, right? So it's this validation yes. that, and it's so hard to give validation to your friends. I mean, on your friend's side, they just don't get it, right? Mm -hmm. They don't get it and they can't empathize because it's really tricky for people to active listen and empathize with something they don't get. Yes. Even empathic people struggle. It's, it's part of the reason we can't understand how a narcissist works for so long. Yes, I'm a total empath and right. I can't get it. You I don't get, get it. it. Right. So it, it, because you were not experiencing what they experience. And so mm -hmm. it's a place where you have to 
set aside emotion and um, trying to empathize from feeling and empathize from with logic to understand a narcissist. And I think in the same way, somebody trying to support someone through uh, uh, emotional violence like this is really what it is. It would, it would, it's a rare person that can do it. So, so, so what can you do? I have one video, I can link it um, in the section of this video, but I can give it to you directly as well. Um, and that has what, to, how to help people, how to, what to ask, what does it say, what to say to your friends or how to, how to get your friends to understand narcissistic abuse. And it's, you know, I should probably make another one because that's one that's like, you just got to trial and error, play with it until you figure out how to get the right words out to people. Right. <laughs> so the, more, the video I made before is more about how to, um, if you're someone watching it and you're like, your friend's like, okay, what is this? It's how to support you. It's not mm-hmm. how to understand the abuse. Basically, I'm saying in that video, you're not going to get it. You're not mm-hmm. going to get it. You're not going to get it. But what you can is you can relate to her or him, depending on the survivor is. You can relate to this person who survived this by just listening. Close your mouth. Just listen. And, and you know, and don't offer them suggestions. Try things like, um, try things like, what is it that you need? so-and-so, I'm not going to say your name, you know, what is it that you need right now? You know, you could, your friend, you could offer suggestions to your really good friends that you know, okay, let me ask you this first. Are there friends that um, want to get it, but can't? I think so. I think so. Um, I have two really good friends who, who get it right now. And they asked exactly that, you know, what do you need in this moment? Mm -hmm. And I've told them, Mm -hmm. just listen, I'm processing I'm journaling every single thing I can remember. All of a sudden I'll have a flashback about something that happened and I'm just, I'm connecting the dots. I feel like I'm like this, you know, psychological detective and I have a string board up (laughs) and I'm connecting all the dots. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh, it's becoming clear who the abuser was. Right. Even when I have the doubts, like, oh no, but that was my fault. And then I'm going like, well, wait, was it? Was that just, you know, manipulation? And and so I do have those friends who are just asking in the moment, hey, what can I do? I guess a lot of it is my apprehension and even just bringing it up to some people where I know that is not their experience. I have, you know, a lot of married friends and a lot of, you know, I'm, I'm a single mom, so I have a son. And so I have a lot of other mom friends and, and they can be, you know, not single moms, but married moms. And, you know, again, I don't know what's happening in their relationship, but uh, it doesn't appear that they've had that, you know, struggle with psychological or emotional abuse. Mm -hmm. And so they just don't get it. But like you said, having somewhere to just point them, I would love to just offer them something or a third party or a YouTube video or Mm a book or something that says, hey, listen, this is what's going on, you know. I would love for you to support me. And like you said, these are the ways that you can support me because it's so, like you said, it's not going to be a matter of getting somebody to believe you just, if you love me, if you want to support me, this is how you can do so. Perfect. Okay. So here's two things. Let's, let me talk to you first about like what you, maybe a way to approach it differently with those people that you know already aren't going to get it. Mm -hmm. And then let's brainstorm some things that would help you. Okay. Out loud here, so because that may help other people who are watching have their friends watch this and be like, that's what my friend needs. Okay. So for you, um, so if your friends, like say you have mom friends that mm-hmm. you do X, Y, and Z with, like you you have your normal little things that you do with them. If you can maybe instead of trying to bring up uh, the topic in that, that you know they won't get. Mm-hmm. figure out what you need from it and go after that. Okay. Ask, ask for that. Like, so for instance, you need, um, you need to know that you make good decisions because you've okay. had, you know what I'm saying? That's like a narcissist will knock you down enough to where you don't, you know, people are often like, I can't trust myself. I don't make good decisions. I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like you lose that. Maybe that's not your experience, but someone might. No, but no, but it, it is. So, so I think what I hear you saying is that maybe approach it, not, you know, spilling all the details of everything and like, oh my gosh, this is what happened. But, you know, this is what I need in this moment. I need you to tell me that I made good decisions or I need you to tell me that, 
you know, I'm, I'm a good person. Yes. Whatever it is, ask for that specifically instead right. of asking for, oh, hey, I'm going to dump everything that ever happened and all this kind of processing that I'm doing in my mind. Now help me figure it out. <laughs> exactly. I think that, I think that the people are limited into the, the ability to hear about abuse, whether it be emotional or physical, but especially with emotional abuse, it can be so hard to describe. And so confusing to someone because they can always go, well, my husband does that, but that's not toxic. The, the problem is the lack of accountability and the lack of empathy. And people don't understand living with that. And so they're not going to get it. And, and a, a lot of times their capacity for hearing such neg negative things is they don't have the tolerance because that's painful. Yeah. You know what I mean? To like think of you going through that, you can only hear that once sometimes, you know, like, I don't know, I don't know your friends, but that would be yeah. one thing. And then I think, I think, yes, I think if you know that you need to be told that you're a good person, like I'm just feeling low and down about myself today, but you know, Mary always cheers me up. You could just say, Hey, Mary, I'm feeling low today. Let's cheer each other up, you know, yeah. and you can make it about both of you and then both of you, you know, and then so it's getting the needs met in a healthy way, not a demanding way. And you need to, you know, it's not making other people responsible for your emotions. It's asking from your friends um, for the things that will both fortify the friendship and help give you some of the validation you need as a person. Does that yeah, make sense? Being, I do, I do. I appreciate that because I think being specific about what I need instead of just expecting somebody else to understand what I need mm -hmm. is extremely helpful. Yeah, you know, and it's pinpointing healthy. what I need. Yeah, and I think it's a healthy way to do it as long as you're not doing it in a, a, a needy, codependent way. You know what I mean? Like it has right. to be. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. And, and I, I think, believe so. And I haven't thought about approaching it that way in, uh -huh. instead of, again, you know, kind of re inflicting the wound or trying to put the wound on somebody else. It's mm -hmm. really just what do I need to heal? Because it's that internal work that we have to do to. Exactly. It's very <laughs> active and very, it's very self-driven. You have to keep going with it. And, mm -hmm. and I feel like that in a, in a friendship can actually strengthen the friendship because if you do that, your friend could do it back. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, like, oh, I'm feeling this today and you may mm -hmm. intuitively already know what to give them, but maybe you don't, you could ask, right. you know, like it can open a different way of communicating with friends, which is awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. And really at this point in the game, being out, having the trauma bonds kind of I'm assuming they're slightly behind you. Uh, it's only been a week today. Oh, honey, <laughs> that that ended it. oh my gosh, you're doing awesome. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I am working hard. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. I think the, I think the light bulb finally came on. I think I knew about this for a long time, but I think the light bulb finally came on and I'm just delving into processing. Okay. Well, you, you're very self-aware then. And so, um, so yeah, 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 yeah. And at this stage, at this stage, it's a little different because you do need, you do need to be able to process and actually verbalize what happened. So yeah. again, finding other survivors in the support groups, um, reaching out for things like therapy or coaching, um, a select few friends may get it. You can try talking to them. So yeah. let's talk about that part, which is okay. like, what, what do you think if you were to say to everybody else's friends in the world, what your friend is needing right now, who just went through a breakup with a narcissist, what would you mm -hmm. say to everyone in the world who has <sighs> friends, the friends of all the survivors? Right. What do they I need? Think, I think just listening. Just listening. You know, just listening and, and just being there. I think like you said in the beginning, it's not about oh yeah, I remember this one time he did this, or I remember, you know, oh, I never thought you were too, you know, or that I always thought that you were too good for him or because you're balancing out the good stuff and there can be a lot of really good stuff mm -hmm. kind of trying to put your mind around the bad stuff and the underlying um, manipulation and the underlying gaslighting. And you're really trying to bring those things to the forefront and connect the dots. And so I think just listening, not bashing him, not bashing you, not doing any of those things that I think traditionally as, as maybe girlfriends we want to do like, oh girl, you're so much better than him or you're going to be great. Or do you want me to introduce you to somebody? No, 
<laughs> it's <laughs> really that. I think I just yeah. want you just to listen and just to say, wow, I'm so sorry you had to go through that, you know? Mm -hmm. So what what can I do? And I think that even arming me with the fact to say, hey, this is what I need in this moment mm -hmm. can be revolutionary to getting what I need. <laughs> Right, because it's okay. So what I would say to add to that, because that's a really awesome description, I would say that to people who are have a friend that comes to them and says, I just got out of this relationship and you you know, you know him, but did you know that he was emotionally abusive and he's been, you know, that the listening and that that as the friend, you you have no obligation, no responsibility, no that you can't fix it. Okay, mm -hmm. you can't fix it for her, unfortunately. If, if we could fix it for her, I'd be over there right now, like waving my hands and making it go away. Yeah. But we can't fix it for our friend. So the listening, the lack of judgment on the situation, on the situation as a whole, there'll be a time to name call him later. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? There'll be yeah. a party somewhere where it all comes out and it's fun. Yeah. And it's not fun, but it's it's uh, cathartic. But yes. right now, <laughs> especially in the beginning when your friend <laughs> leaves a toxic relationship, they're vulnerable to going back. They're vulnerable <laughs> to being pulled back in by, by the toxic person. And that can be really hard to understand for people who haven't been there. But mm -hmm. these are like 100% common things that happen. Your, your friend is in a, in a vulnerable position right now, vulnerable to being pulled back in, vulnerable to self-hatred, vulnerable to self-judgment, vulnerable to feeling victimized. Um, your friend is feeling um, confused part of their brain is knowing that this was completely wrong and another part of their brain is saying but it was so awesome too yeah so so all the discussion that goes back and forth when you haven't been through it and when you haven't when you're not trained to help people through it mm -hmm. you can actually confuse your friend so yeah well-meaning as you are and loving your friend and trying to talk it through and give her all those her or him all of the words that that our guest here just described, please at least try not doing that and see if it helps just listening, just listening and being like, what do you need? I don't know what to say. That's another good one. I don't know what to say. That shows validation. Like when someone, somebody, if you're telling someone a story or when I hear a story from someone and it's something I haven't experienced, but it's awful. I'm like, I don't even know what to say to you. And usually the person says, that's okay. That was enough. Just here hearing me was enough. I, I think you touched on just no, no judgment. Well, why didn't, why didn't you see that? Or in my particular instance, it's been 10 years, but there's probably been eight times he's broken up with me and given me the silent treatment just to come back and say, I want you back again. And then people are like, but why did you go back? But not understanding and nor did I understand the psychology of it, of why I went back because I'm an empath and I needed to help him heal. I, mm -hmm. I need you to help me get through this. I love you. I want us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, my empath heart is like, oh my gosh, absolutely. You need me. You want me, right. mm -hmm. but not having the judgment um, of, oh my gosh, why did you go back so many times? Like, why didn't you just stay away last time? Well, because I didn't know any better. Right. Now I know better. Right. <laughs> And even, even knowing better. So yes, what you're saying is so accurate and such, so well-worded. Um, you're describing the trauma bond situation and you're describing the way a narcissist is what we call Hoover's in for those people that have friends that are, that are the friends here. It's called Hoover's in and basically you're being sucked back in like a Hoover vacuum cleaner and they find your hook. They find the hook that pulls you in. So for her, it was her empath uh her the way empathy works in her and the need to help people and the feeling of um wanting to help help heal him for other people it could be other things so they will find and it doesn't it can happen to anyone and it can happen in any any type of person so they'll find your hook and they'll pull you in with it no matter what it and that's why people go back that's one reason trauma bonding is a whole nother thing. There's a ton of videos on that. So uh, we can talk about that another time. If you have friends watching this that, that go, what's this trauma bonding you keep saying? There are so many videos on it that just one would explain it well. Um, yeah, so so that's one way a friend could help. Another, another thing um, that I can think of is talking about ways to 
give distraction when needed, when asked for, without pushing distraction onto your friend who survived abuse. So if your friend were to come to you and say, look, I heard your story. I don't know what to say. I don't know. I, I listened. I, I don't know what to say, but if you need a distraction, let me know and we can go do something. Or if they, if they said, hey, you know, I'm going to invite you every week. You say no when you need to. So basically, it's offering a distraction and allowing that person to have boundaries with grace, knowing that they're going to refuse a lot. And when they do take it, it may be shorter. It may be, they may have less spirit in them. It may not cheer them up, but just being there with them while they are going through this can be hugely helpful because mm -hmm. then someone doesn't feel alone. This is a really isolating thing to have happen. It, it shrinks your world into a world of you and a toxic person. Yes. And then when the toxic person leaves, it's just you and you can't, you, you can't um, relate or connect with other people who aren't going through it. And it gets really, really lonely. So if a friend can just be there and hang out with you and understand that if you need to leave early, if you need to, if you're not happy and peppy, if you're, that, that's all okay for a little while, you know, is that, is that something that would help? Do you think for you? Uh, I absolutely think so. I absolutely think so. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, just sometimes just, just having another person there. Cause I think, you know, you missed that person, the narcissistic relationship. So had you under their control mm -hmm. and, and I mean, we would do everything together. So mm -hmm. whether it's to go out and have a meal or watch something on Netflix or do whatever, and just to have another human being there to Again, not judgment, not anything, but just be so you have that human connection. I think mm -hmm. that's really important. It is really important. And I think the non-judgment goes, that's a, probably the biggest point to drive home is that please don't judge your friend who's been through emotional abuse because it affects not just their moment right now, but it's affected every part of their life, their, emo their thinking, their emotions, their cognitive abilities, you know, their attention span, their spiritual life, their financial life, their, you know, their friendships, their family relationships, it literally has affected everything. And when, when you're healing from this, you're pulling little threads and trying to untangle something really huge. And it, it can be really precarious if anyone is pulling the other direction. Right. So you need to just process it as it comes out. And sometimes your friend's gonna, you know, if your friend's been through this or for your friends to understand, sometimes I'm gonna forget things. Sometimes I'm gonna space out. Sometimes I'm gonna say, I'm gonna bail on you. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to, but this is for right now, this is, I'm, uh, you know, it's too much. We're well, I think you, yeah, I think what you bring up is really good because I, I think that I've found even that there are triggers that I didn't even know were triggers, mm -hmm. you know, seeing something, hearing something, smelling something. And all of a sudden, you know, because I'm trying to put together the pieces and I'm trying to logically walk through, you know, how did I get here and how do I untangle it and how do I get out of it that when one of those triggers happens, you know, I immediately, I have my phone with me and I'm keeping notes on my phone just because I've been so victimized to the fact where I don't trust my own memory. Mm -hmm. And now I'm writing stuff down to make kind of twofold, I guess, to make it real. Mm -hmm. And I've kept other memories. And I think what really jarred me into realizing that I have been abused was looking at past notes that I had made to myself and I realized I had been doing that so I could keep the memory accurate mm -hmm. instead of being gaslighted and told you misremembered that I found notes going back years on my phone that I had just kind of gotten buried and when I uncovered them it was kind of like this breadcrumbs of of reminders of wow I was really trying to tell myself that I am sane that I'm not crazy that I did have this experience. Exactly. I mean, that is so good. And, and also when you are triggered, you are in a different, you go into fight flight when you're triggered. And when anyone's in fight flight, the brain goes offline and we're not thinking the way we normally think, behaving the way we normally behave, we're freaked out. And, mm -hmm. they, and it takes energy, effort, attention, focus, and calming down to get over that trigger. 
And that can happen at any moment at any time. Like you said, sights, smells, sounds, reminders, a car driving by, a certain dog walking by, like it, it can literally be anything, right? Especially yeah. where you're at right now. I mean, so new. Um, so, so yes, your friends. So think about it. It's how hard that would be to understand. Yeah. Think about it, like we're, we're describing so many things here. Yes. And you can see why people can't get it, right? Because mm-hmm. it is not just one thing. It is your whole entire being right now. Yeah. And it took me 10 years to get here. So yeah. I, I mean, I don't want to have, and I don't want to be judgmental of them either. I don't no, want no, to judge them, them for not, for not understanding. Mm-hmm. Like you said, I just, I really love your point about just letting them know what I need in the moment. I don't have to explain or try to explain everything right now. I don't have to justify myself mm-hmm. just in a friendship, just being there for me, just saying in this moment, you know what, in this moment, I need you to just tell me that I remembered maybe a memory with us previously. I remembered it the right way, right? you know, just, just little things like that to help cognitively make me feel as though I'm not completely losing it. <laughs> right, right. Yes. And, and, and that it's like, if you come, if you took off and went to another planet for a few years and came back and everything's the same, but very different, you might need people to kind of hold your hand and go, this is a cell phone and this is how it works, you know, because we've been off in narc land. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. Like for real, it's another planet. It's the world that revolves around the ego and delusion of the narcissist. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And that's how it feels. It feels like I, uh, that's a, that's a great analogy because it feels like I've been in Narkland, and it feels like maybe the fog is starting to clear and I'm seeing that, oh, that's where earth is. And that's where I used to be. And, mm-hmm. you know, maybe that's a, a grounding mechanism to be like, okay, yeah, this, this is the grass. This is how it feels. This is mm-hmm. real. This is not, this is not fantasy land anymore. Right. And I think when you're talking about triggers, just to touch on that for you, for you, um, if, when you feel those triggers come up, especially when you're out in, in public, it's so awful to be triggered out in public where you can't just break down. That is a really good tool right there. This is the grass under my feet. These are the flowers next to me to like come into the room around you, the, the atmosphere, the space around you. Oh, the temperature is warm today. Okay. My skin feels, you know, I'm wearing a strappy top because it is warm <laughs> out, you know, like to remind yourself. Yeah. I dressed appropriately for this weather because it is warm and like bring yourself totally into the present moment Mm -hmm. that that can take your brain and your, well, it can make your body calm. And once Mm -hmm. your body calms, your brain can come back online. When you have a a trigger, you go into like a, like a, um, okay. So your brain, when you're traumatized after that many years, your cortisol levels have been high and your stress levels have been high, your, all of the um, brain chemistry that happens when you have that much abuse going on mm-hmm. it destroys part of your brain. I think it's the hippocampus that covers the amygdala. Okay, the amygdala is in charge of fight flight. There's the, the thing that covers it, tells it, regulates it and says, is this danger? Is this not danger? When mm-hmm. that is not, when that, it atrophies that. Okay, so that part of your brain gets atrophied. So basically our brains, once we have PTSD, don't have the capacity physiologically to determine danger from perceived danger. So when you see it, when you have a trigger, it's triggering, I'm using the word danger, but it could be uh, a triggering emotion, right? It's triggering the, the negative feelings, the fear, the anxiety, all of it. So when that's offline, the rest of your brain isn't functioning right. The cognitive mm-hmm. function is like, whoop, your executive function is in the background. So if you can calm down with reorienting and calm down by calming your body, then you can cope with that trigger just enough to get where you can take a deep breath and let your emotions do what they need to do. Does that make right. sense? So that's, that's, yeah. It totally does. I've, I've also been practicing mindful meditation. Yeah. Um, and, and that's really helped to, to ground me to just okay, what is, like you said, what's, what's going on around me right this second? Okay. This is real. This is reality. You mm-hmm. know, but I, I think like you said as well, the body's not processing it because I've trained my brain for so long to feel always this anxiousness, this always walking on eggshells, this everything that I need to calm myself, that 
no, this is the present. I don't need to walk on eggshells. I know who I am. This is the real truth right now. This is what truth is. And when I continue to do that, you know, hopefully I'll be retraining my brain to be able to realize the difference between, okay, this is, this is reality, or this is somebody triggering my brain to think a certain way. Exactly. And when you don't freak out about the triggers, it can be helpful. So no, that, you know, they happen. What happens often is we get triggered and we go, I hate this trigger. And we start freaking out about the trigger. And then it, it, it escalates into something huge, huge, huge. And then you're crying and your friends are like, what's the matter? And then you're out and going, oh, I'm so embarrassed. But so if we can train ourselves, it really is training. It's retraining your brain, how to respond to these things. Unfortunately, that's where we're left. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, especially after, after I'm trying to practice self-compassion too, because I don't expect to get over this or through this overnight. I mean, it took 10 years to be trained this way. So there's going to take some time to unravel it Absolutely. and to process it mm-hmm. and, and to do that. But again, the helping through just um, things and suggestions and, and talking about it. And especially, you know, the group that I found on Facebook to be able to just put it out there sometimes mm-hmm. and just have people say, you know, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry you're going through that. Or, oh my gosh, I totally get it. I've been through the same exact thing it really is soothing to have that validation. That's good. And I'm just going to point out here for uh, that down in the description of every video, the group that you're talking about, as well as any information that's needed for personal and individual help is down in every description of every video. So you can find that to anyone out there that um, is going, what's this group? What is she talking about? I knew it. It's right. It's down there. <laughs> Likely you found me through that group, but that's, that's okay. <laughs> so, right. Now that's really good. So is there anything else with the friend stuff that, that you feel like you have questions? I mean, do you feel like that gives you some tools to work with or is there? No, I think that that's really helpful because I think that, like you said, opening, opening that door without having to spill everything, Mm -hmm. opening the door to just say, Hey, listen, I'm going through some rough stuff right now. This is what I could use from you. This is what I need in this moment. You know, true friends are going to respond to that and just say, Mm -hmm. Hey, you know, you don't, you don't have to spill your guts to me. You don't have to talk about it if it's going to make you emotional. Mm -hmm. Okay. You need me to come over right now and just sit on the couch with you and, you know, watch a television show. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Now, and so true I, friends can have boundaries with it too, where they can say, Hey, I can't right now. I'd love to do it later or whatever. You know what I mean? Like true friends yeah. can talk about it. So that's, yes, that's really good. Um, no, that, I think that that's really going to help open doors before I get more comfortable maybe with, with kind of divulging everything because as much as I want friends around me right now, I just don't want to have this deep, dark conversation and kind of throw up on everything that's happened. You know, sometimes you just want just physical presence. You do. And sometimes the most damaging thing, well-intended or not, can be the lack of understanding. Mm-hmm. It can be the lack of validation because it, the problem is we've been so invalidated for so long that one more person not hearing your experience is actually worse than just not telling it. Yeah. And so I've stayed silent a lot. And so it's it's really helpful to be able to just ask for those and, and practice the boundaries, right? Because we need to create boundaries for the future for ourselves, because that's something that I haven't been accustomed to with with this particular ex, you know, just kind of opening the floodgates. So, you know, practicing those boundaries with people who are safe. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Is is a good starting point to learn. It is. Yeah. Well, thank you. You, you're awesome. I think that. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, I wish you the best. Thank you for that validation. <laughs> you're welcome. No, really. You, your self-awareness is, is so, um, it's going to be so much a good tool and your ability to sort of accept things that you see around you as they are. That's, that's what keeps you away from the narcissist, being able to accept what is, is. Yeah. And it's, you know, I, it's, it's hard to learn these lessons kind of later in life, but mm-hmm. I had chosen this person because every other person had cheated on me and this person didn't cheat, but having that vulnerability of just not having somebody, having somebody not cheat on you, isn't enough mm-hmm. to know that somebody took those vulnerabilities 
and then made it a psychological and emotional game is just a whole other level. Mm -hmm. So, you know, being self-aware and wanting something so much to not have wasn't enough of a reason to be in a relationship to overlook all of the other mental stuff that was happening. Mm -hmm. So, you know, life is a learning process and, and I'll get through it, but it's just, it's tough. Mm. <laughs> it's tough. Well, keep, keep reaching <laughs> out where the support helps, you know, keep reaching out yeah. where, where you find the, the, where you find the validation for this particular thing that yes. you, you yes. know, and, and that way you're not, you're not, um, entangling it with your friendships that already have good a good face you know what I mean yeah. like we, we think we can yeah. go to people for everything but it, the truth is this is so complicated it is it it's is so complicated it really really is it'd be like expecting your friend to understand you know biophysics because, you, <laughs> because you're a you know whatever yeah. They, yeah unless that's their specialty they probably don't they're like what you know that's um, yeah so it's it, it really is and and I think that I wish you the best on this. Um, thank you. Keep, thank you. Yeah. Keep keep in contact with yeah with what you're doing and thank got, you. Got <laughs> you got this for sure. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Well, so nice to talk to you. You too. <laughs>